Hello and welcome everybody. I'm MTG Gaming Bob. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'd like to have a conversation with you about the reserve list, give you an update on my giveaway status, and introduce a new segment I like to call Hidden Gems. So stay tuned. Let's get right into it and talk about the reserve list. What is the reserve list? The reserve list is a list of cards that Wizards has stated that they do not intend to reprint in a functionally identical form. Jake and Joel or Magic recently did a video that did an excellent job covering how could they get around the reserve list reprint rule. Due to the recent surge in prices for the reserve list, I decided to go out and do a little research on the Wizards website for the reprint policy. And what I found out by reading their page might be a little surprising to most of you. They actually can reprint any reserve list cards. Now I know a lot of you are gonna say, oh, that's not possible, there's no way. They've said that they won't reprint any reserve list cards. But that's not correct. If you actually read the policy on the page, it states that all of the policies for reprint only apply to tournament legal cards. So what does that mean? They could technically reprint any alpha, beta, unlimited card, including black lotuses and moxes and time walks. They just can't be tournament legal. And this would not be the first time that Wizards has printed cards that are not tournament legal, such as the collector edition cards, the silver bordered cards in the unsets, oversized cards. So there's a lot of different ways they can get around the reprint rule. But what does that mean for the collector out there? Will it tank their investment in some of these very expensive alpha and beta cards? I don't believe so. If you look, cards like Shiv and Dragon, Birds of Paradise, among others, are still very expensive cards, and they've reprinted those as recently as last year. They can definitely reprint functional cards that people love that still hold a high collector value. Personally, I believe they should get rid of the reserved list. I know that's going to cause a lot of ruffled feathers out there. But even on their page for reprint policies, they state that this should be a game that's accessible to everyone. Now, I understand that everybody can play. They make cards that are affordable. However, a lot of the tournaments, especially the vintage ones, almost completely preclude anybody who didn't previously already own these cards. Now, most Magic players don't participate in these vintage tournaments. And if you didn't already purchase your cards, it's highly unlikely that you're going to start purchasing 10, 15,000, 20,000, 500,000 dollar cards to play in these tournaments. Nor do I think most people would even play with those. Those cards have gone into the realm of collector only. I think that's not very healthy for the game. I do think a secondary market is healthy for the game. However, to make products that specifically are aimed only at the collectors and cut off your newer players in favor of the collectors, I think is ultimately unhealthy for Magic in the long run. So what have I done recently with my purchases? I'll show you some of the ones that I've bought actually within the last couple of months. Now I like old cards. I purchased some of the Legends cards that are still fairly affordable out there like Boomerang, Flash Flood, Active Volcano, and I have a couple of surprise cards here that I'm going to call hidden gems, and I'll reveal those in a little bit. Now, most of these cards I picked up for less than a dollar each. I like having the old cards, and you can't go back in time and reprint more of them. So they're going to become more and more scarce. You can still pick many of them up yourself at very, very cheap prices. Now, the next couple of cards I'm going to show you, I feel are still relevant and can be used in current decks. The first card I'm talking about is Blood Pet. It's a one black mana for a 1-1 one, one creature that you can sacrifice at instant speed and get one mana. So let's think about that. This is a creature that can be a blocker for a turn that you can sacrifice to trigger any sacrifice mechanics. And when you do sacrifice it, you get one mana. So it can act as ramp. The next card I'm gonna talk about actually comes from Fallen Empires and it's the Basil Thrall. It's a 1-2 creature for 2 black mana. It's very similar to Blood Pet in that you can use it as a blocker 
You can sacrifice it and gain two black mana. The only drawback compared to the Blood Pet is that it has to tap to sacrifice it. So that means it can't be sacrificed the turn that it comes into play for mana. So both of these cards, I got four copies each for a dollar. And that brings me to my next point. Magic is a game. It's a game that I hope most of you enjoy as much as I do. And I would like to see the game continue to thrive for many years to come. I have a lot invested in it, both monetarily and emotionally, through the last almost 30 years. I would like to hand this off to my children, and I would love to see the environment actually grow. It's a thriving market for collectible card games out there, and I think we have many opportunities to make the game approachable for newer players. And I believe that the reserve list actually prohibits growth. Sure, it's great for some investors out there, but shouldn't the game first be for the players and then as a side benefit that some people will make a ton of money as investors? It shouldn't be the other way around. And I believe that Wizards policies should reflect that. And I believe that we should all embrace that. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't appreciate that people are making a ton of money on the game out there right now. However, I don't think that should dictate policy. I personally would lose a lot of money if the reserve list went down, but I would rather have that and have the game exist for many years to come than to make a ton of money on the cards that I currently have and watch the game wither and die. So I hope all of you can find some use out of the information that I've provided today. And I'm looking at probably $2 worth of cards in my hands right now. And I'm ecstatic to have them. I hope that all of you find the joy in the game, however it is that you want to play it. Even if you want to invest in it, and that's all that you do, is buy cards and sell cards for investment purposes. However, I don't believe that those practices should cut off the newer players. This game lives on the lifeblood of bringing in new players. And we need to continue to encourage that by supporting our LGSs. I don't agree with some of the content makers out there that LGSs aren't necessary, that tournaments aren't necessary. I think that this is a one-off type of year with the state of the world and how we personally interact. And I think it's operating in a vacuum. Once we return to normal operation in the rest of the world, I think things will change. And I think we're going to see the value again of the local game stores of meeting up in person. Not everybody has a group that they can come home to and play kitchen table magic. So we still need that social interaction out there face to face to meet new players, bring new people into the fold. Okay, so a quick update on the giveaway. We are getting so very close to 50 subscribers. We're sitting at 47 as of the recording of this video. So please help me spread the word. I also really appreciate all the comments that you have given me out there. It's been a very positive experience so far. So if you haven't done so, please click the subscribe button and the like button if you like what I'm doing. Help spread the word so that we can get up to that 50 subscriber mark and get to our next giveaway. And hopefully we continue to grow and I can give away more and more products. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you all have a wonderful day.